Parshas Nasai begins with the completion of the census, the counting of the population in the desert. Each person counts and is born with special unique talents that he can and needs to use to better the world. Through our talents, we can also make a parnasa, a living. But interestingly, there's a Pusik that teaches that every gift offering of what is sacred, which is brought to the Kohen, shall become his property. For example, the first fruits, the Bikurim, were brought from the seven species for which the land of Israel is praised. Wheat, barley, grapes, figs, pomegranates, olives, and dates. The Mishnah describes how when a farmer saw the first figs, grapes, or pomegranates had ripened, he would tie a thread around them and say, Behold, these are Bikurim, thus devoting the first fruits to Hashem. These were later placed in simple baskets made from peeled willows and reeds and brought to the Holy Temple in Jerusalem with gratitude for these gifts of the produce of the land. Producing fruit, especially the choice fruit presented as Bikurim, requires great effort and toil. A person must plant, sow, prune, etc. When he finally gets to see the fruit of his labors, the Torah tells him that the very first and best must be given to the Kohen. Since Torah teachings are applicable at all times and in all places, this applies to us as well. When one has the opportunity to give tzedakah, charity, he should not dwell on the fact that earning a living requires great effort and think that the first and best should thus be kept for himself. Rather, the first of his hard-earned money should be, as the Torah says, brought to the house of Hashem. It should be donated for tzedakah. A person can fool himself into thinking that his own needs take precedence only when he does not understand that all his money is in fact tzedakah money. Such a person has yet to free himself from the feeling that the money he is considering giving away belongs solely to him, coming without any assistance from above. When a person feels that he is alone, responsible for his wealth, it's difficult for him to share with another. But if a person's evil inclination were simply to declare that he should not give money for tzedakah, it would be ignored. Instead, the evil inclination begins with a seemingly valid complaint. Since the worker himself also has needs, let him keep some of the first of his hard-earned money for himself. After all, that too can rightfully be considered tzedakah. But if a person is intent on bringing it to the house of Hashem, he will take it as a given that Bikurim, the first and best of his fruits, should be given to others and not think of taking any for himself, just as he would never dream of taking other money designated for tzedakah. When one acts in this manner, he can be assured of the blessing that Rashi speaks of in the verse that follows. He that gives to the priest, the gifts that are coming to him, shall be blessed with great wealth. The last thing the Parsha tells us is how each Nasi, each leader of the 12 tribes, brings an offering for the inauguration of the altar. The offering brought by each of them is exactly the same, but the Torah repeats it, each one, to show that Hashem values each offering a special. This again impresses upon us the fact that we are each unique and every single one of us has something special to offer the world. Good Shabbos.